Good evening. I call this meeting to order at 6 p.m. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Begin. Okay. Can you hear me, Don Fish? <laughs> okay, well, we have three directors that we need to swear in. Under the law, all public officers upon entering into um, office must take an oath of office. So if I could please have our newly elected directors please stand and then raise your right hand. And you'll repeat after me all at the same time, okay? I, state your name, do solemnly swear that I will swear and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion and that I will well and faithfully Discharge the, duties discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. Well, congratulations, you are officially sworn in and you may take your seat. At this time, I would like to present this certificate of appreciation to Ms. Deborah Phillips in sincere appreciation for your service to our community as a member of the Phelan Pinion Hills CSD Board of Directors. I want to quickly say thank you and congratulations to you too. I know you guys are going to learn a lot and enjoy the time. And I want to thank all of you guys, too. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Roll call. Uh, let the record reflect that Director Roberts is absent. Uh, approval of agenda. Mr. Bartz, are there any changes to the agenda? There are no changes to the agenda tonight. All right. May I have a motion to approve the agenda? I motion. All in favor of the motion to approve the agenda say aye. 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 Any opposed? The agenda is approved. Moving on to public comment. Mrs. Sevy, are there any members of the public that have a public comment? Are there any members of the public present in the room this evening that have a public comment? Okay, I don't hear anybody. We have a few participants on Zoom, so I'll just go in order of appearance. Uh, Cheryl Roden, do you have a general public comment? Uh, just briefly, thank you to Deborah for her great service to our community, and welcome and congratulations to the new and returning board members. Thank you. And then next, Meredith Hergengrader. Um, just uh, thanks, Debbie, again, and um, it's been good having someone that will talk to us and, and think about what we have to say. So um, congratulations to the new people. Thank you. And Peter Barnes. No comment. 
And that is everybody for public comment. All right, thank you very much. So we will move on to community reports. Uh, we will start with Dr. Holman. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Test, test, <laughs> testing. Hey, good evening to everyone. I, I want to say the same uh, relative to what's been um, referenced, specific to, I, I would say, community service here. Uh, public service to me is a great, um, it's a great honor in my role, and to the three directors, congratulations all through you. Thank you for taking on what I think a lot of us um, very much appreciate, and that is service to a community that we love here. And that's the snow line boundaries, of course. I'm a little bit broader in that context. To Deborah Phillips, Deborah Phillips, thank you for your service too. Deborah served on our community cabinet as well, and we thank you for, again, people who sign up for the duty. Um, and to that end, we did that last night. We have three uh, board members ourselves who we gave the oath of office to, and that would be Christina Beringer, Marcus Hernandez, and Ruth Martinez. And so we're grateful for their service as well. And in this month of gifts, you see this jacket I'm wearing here today. I just got back from Serrano High School. We had our um, 27th annual, minus COVID, of course, in the pandemic, and we couldn't do it. And that is um, our senior citizen, uh, senior citizen holiday celebration. And what we do is we invite all the senior citizens. We have four buses that go to the, 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 the three community centers, one of which is right here. Pinion Hills, uh, Pinion Hills Community Center, Wrightwood Community Center, and then all the way out to our farthest uh, from this distance here, from this spot right here, Vista Verde Elementary School, and bus our senior citizens up to the Performing Arts Center. And we had close to 200 of our oldest residents uh, here in, in our 200 square miles that we call Snowline again. And they were, they were really treated to, and I use that word purposefully, treated to performance from our performing arts students. I'm very proud of them. Who are the performing arts students who performed today? That would amount to our dance team headed up by Kristen Grijalva, our, um, our um, drama club and um, all those great actors and actresses headed up by Bev Quinn. Our music department, Matt Fell, heads that up. And then finally, uh, Johnny, Johnny Dolan heads up our vocal, um, vocal experts, right, the choir. Uh, if you wonder how well they do, our, our choir just recently performed at Carnegie Hall uh, from, a, from a musical standpoint. Matt Fallon is a marching band, highest score ever in the history of Serrano High School, 40 plus years. They went to the state finals down there in Huntington Beach and performed extremely well. If you haven't seen our dance team, who is um, small but mighty, they perform at the highest levels too. And please get to a play when you talk about that fourth group, right, by Bev Quinn. We have three throughout the course of the year, and they are very powerful. And we were able to give small <laughs> snippets of their great work to those, um, to those residents, and then we fed them from our uh, food nutrition services and uh, gave them gifts from our um, career technical education program, the Woodshop program specifically, uh, made pens for them, poinsettias, and all those gifts. With all that um, you know, backdrop and the spirit of gifts, thank you for the gifts that you give us in terms of supporting us. Giving a specific example, you might say, Ryan, you might just say that. Sean Wright, Sean reached out to me. Sean, you are revisiting a tradition like no other, right? The, the newly elected uh, or an incumbent director knows of this. Way back in the day, we used to paint the water tank way, way back in the day. Um, Kathy is very young, I'm not. But um, Sean, thanks for taking that on again. It means a lot to us. You're the one who initiated that. It says a lot about you and what all of you do here at um, PPH CSD is you're willing to work with us. And, and so what we'll be doing is getting our best artists, if you will, working with Sean and all the others up here um, who, who are going to, to paint the, um, the year of graduation, which would be 23. Sean, I think I've heard that you're doing work to make sure you can, as best you possibly can on private property, clear the area so people can see it. I really appreciate that, Sean. Uh, many thanks to Chris, of course, too. I think you had a hand in that. Don, thanks for giving permission on that in that regard. It just means a lot to us. And again, this time of gifts, I'll just end by saying that um, we just appreciate the gift to partner with you. And if you want to want to see any great things happening, go to any of the schools right now because we've got <coughs> plenty of celebrations. So sorry I took too much time, but just really proud of what I get to do, and that is be witness to all that great work and work with you as well. Um, to the back of the president there. <coughs> Thank you very much. We thank appreciate you. it. Yeah, thank you. All right. I don't see any other members for the community reports, so we will move on to number three, consent items. Does anyone have anything that they would like to pull? Okay. 
Okay, all in favor of the motion to approve the consent item say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion passes. Number four, we have no matters removed from consent. Number five, no presentations. So we move on to number six, discussion and possible action regarding election of officers. Mr. Bartz. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Um, the, tonight we'll be electing two officers after the election and our policy or the laws um, within 45 days after each general after each general district of our, or unopposed election, the board shall meet and elect the officers of the board. The board shall elect its officers annually at its second meeting in December. And the officers of the board are the president and vice president. And with that, I'll turn it back over to, to the president. All right. Uh, so um, at this time, I will uh, take nominations for president. All right. Do I have a second? I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And um, I also would like to nominate uh, Mark Roberts for uh, vice president. I'll second that. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on. All right, so we will move on to 6B, discussion and possible action regarding committee assignments. Mr. Bartz. Thank you. This is also the meeting annually where um, the board decides who's going to be on which committees and the staff recommends that the board president appoint district committees for the 2023 and approve the proposed meeting schedule. Okay. The meeting proposed meeting schedule is um, attached on the following pages. Got it. All right. So everyone had an opportunity to look at when the committees meet and everybody's good, right, with that? Okay. So um, I did have an opportunity to discuss this with everyone. And so at this point, what I would like to do is um, find my page. Uh, I would recommend that uh, Director Roberts and Director Hoffman stay on engineering. Uh, that myself and uh, Greg, Director Snyder, uh, go on park and rec. That uh, Kathy and myself would be on solid waste. Uh, legislative would be um, Chuck and Greg. And finance would be Mark and Chuck. Any questions, concerns with that? No? Okay. Nope, she appoints no, it. <clears throat> Just real quickly, I will be reaching out to the newly formed committees to determine the best time of the proposed days or the scheduled days for these meetings. Um, and so look for the, look for my emails. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So we will move on to 6C, first reading of ordinance establishing regulations for custody and use of the district seal, district logo, and district insignia. Mr. Bartz. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to read the entire background on this. I'm sure all of the, all of the members have had an opportunity to, to read this. But the ordinance was introduced and discussed at the board meeting on November 16th, 2022. In order to adopt an ordinance, ordinance, a legal process must be followed, which includes a first reading, a second reading, a public hearing, along with the noticing and publishing requirements. And um, if you would like, I can go through this, but if, you, if you've already reviewed it, I will, I will pass on that. And the staff recommendation is for the board to waive the first reading of the ordinance, establishing regulations for custody and use of the district seal, district logo, and district insignia. All right, thank you very much. Uh, do you have any questions? No? No? Okay, so then can I have a motion on that? All right, All right. so we have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion to uh, waive the first reading, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the motion passes, thank you. All right, we will be moving on to 6D, discussion and possible action regarding resolution 2022-33, 
Government Banking Public Unit Resolution and Master Signature Authorization Agreement. Mr. Thank you. Words. Thank you, Madam President. <laughs> As a result of the November 8, 22 election, the district has two new directors who need to be added to the authorized signers at the district's banking inst institution. Authorized signers are required to approve payroll and accounts payable transactions. In order to add signatures and signers, a resolution must be adopted. adopted. And staff's recommendation is for the board to adopt resolution number 2022-33, government banking public unit resolution and master signature authorization agreement, which is attached. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions? No? All right. Um, I will motion that we adopt resolution 2022-33. Second. All right. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you very much. Okay, moving on to 6E, discussion and possible action regarding purchase and installation of 1,280 feet of eight inch DR14 pipe on Pinion Hills Road. Thank you, I'm going to turn this over to George, but I also want to caution the board that not all of the meetings go this quickly. <laughs> <laughs> We've got through a lot of items in a very short period of time here. And, uh, Shh, don't ruin it, Yeah, Bob. I know. But, so I'm going to turn this one over to George to, to lengthen the meeting. <laughs> Great. I was going to use your method to shorten the meeting and, and, and get away from reading the background. but Whatever you need. <laughs> I'll do that. Well, thank you. Uh, the, and, and probably what, what we've been discussing the last several years um, was the, pre the tank level concerns at 6A and the point to get to um, with the updated model uh, to determine where the issues were with low pressure. And as we had presented to the committee in engineering as well as the board, there are two areas. One was on the west side, the west, southwest side of the district out by Smithens Tanks and the other uh, was over here off of uh, Highway 138 at Quail. There were two areas of concerns that were low pressure. And it was kind of regulated by uh, the tank levels at 6A. Um, the model determined that there wasn't an issue on, at Quail. And for us to kind of get into uh, testing, do field testing, uh, that needed to happen during uh, the winter season or low peak. Um, that was completed. Um, it was determined that a pipeline at Pinion Hills Road over by Spinton's tanks uh, was necessary to mitigate the low pressure. Um, by putting this pipeline, it would increase the pressure slightly as well as increase the GPMs. Um, and I'm going to leave this over to Sean, hand this over to Sean and kind of fill you in the remainder on that. So the tank George is referring to and Mr. Holman so kindly referred to is the one right up on the hill here. It's about a 20 foot tank. Um, historically, we've only been able to use about five feet of that. What this pipeline will allow operations to do is maximize the capacity of that tank <coughs> to its entirety. Field testing was performed a few weeks back and it established the baseline for the requirement of this pipeline, but it also eliminated a secondary one that we thought was necessary and that's been rendered not true. Um, and this portion's for Mr. Kennedy. Uh, in accordance with section 4205 of the district's purchasing policy, formal bids were sought with public notification in the Mountaineer Progress newspaper, uh, public notification and RFP email notifications on the 13th through November 1st. Uh, no bids were received for this material, uh, so multiple bids were sought in accordance with 420306 of the district's purchasing policy, which produced the following three bids for this pipeline, as we have listed. Uh, we budgeted 157000 uh, utilizing the cheapest quote with uh, in-house labor brings us in right about eighty. $81,000 uh, and will allow the maximum usage for that tank up on the hill and will improve operational efficiency. Um, we can use more time of use um, on our pumps, hopefully lowering the electric bill. Uh, we did not do a cost analysis of that. Uh, we want to make sure that that is fact and certain before we bring that forward, but we can bring that to committee uh, when we have those numbers. So it is the staff's recommendation for the board to approve the purchase of the materials and authorize the construction necessary to install uh, 1,280 foot of 8 inch DR14 pipe on Pinion Hills Road um, supplied from Inland Waterworks in the amount not to exceed $61,048.09. And I'd be happy to answer any questions and congratulations to our <coughs> new directors. Thank you. 
All right. Questions? So you're using inland water work? Yes, ma'am. For the supply of the materials and uh, in-house labor with district staff will be utilized to install the pipeline. Yes. Um, uh, Mr. Wright has been very um, diligent in complying with the district's purchasing policy on this. So I we would like that struck into the record. <laughs> <laughs> I, concur, I concur with staff's recommendation on that. Uh, Sean, so question, the Inland Water Works quote was the 61,048.09. What's the difference in materials to the 65,372? That was a change. Um, the cost of pipe has gone down um, actually just a little bit and that $4,000 change reflects um, from when the original RFP was flown and the request for um, request for proposals uh, in accordance with 420306 was several weeks after the public notice and that price difference we see of about $4,000 was that the lessening of the materials okay. cost so it's reflected here. Excellent. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, I have a question. So it sounds like you have a hydraulic restriction in that zone to use the reservoir. That is and so exactly the true. Got too high and it caused your pressure to drop. That is exactly true. Um, lesser on the velocity, more on the lack of head from the tank in our upper zones to the east. Okay. Without that head from the tank, um, this pipeline will allow us to rework a couple pressure zones, specifically 7, seven West. Um, and allow us to serve higher pressure with less elevation in the tank. And it sounds like you, used, you did a flow test to recalibrate your model. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. With that, do I have a motion? Oh, George. Yeah, yeah. If, if I can just add, uh, speaking of the hydraulic model, uh, the model was revised uh, a few years ago to an extended period of simulation, a uh, 24 hour period. Um, the first model that we've ever had as a district was completed back in 2009, 2010 for our water master plan. Um, since then, there's been a lot of um, <coughs> field testing, calibration, um, and what we have now is, is more of a true model. And that's what kind of questioned whether we really did have an issue on the east side of the district. So um, we were comfortable to see that the model matched field results. So. Um, with that being said, um, I, I think we have a really robust model. We're always uh, adjusting and modifying that with, um, with fire flows and, and static and pressures and all that other stuff. So we have that in file. So when we're ready to do a minor update, we'll, we'll kind of initiate that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, so do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. All right. Second. All right. All in favor of the motion to approve the purchase of the materials, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. The motion passes. <clears throat> okay. Moving on to 6F, update on the proposed Civic Center and Phelan Park expansion projects and approval of payment to California Department of Fish and Wildlife for the incidental take permit. Mr. Bartz. Thank you. I'm going to let George handle part of this, and I have some more in additional information when he gets done with his, and also if any questions arise. We're looking at probably six to eight months uh, for review, and they'll come back with their conditions, and then we have the opportunity to respond to their conditions. 
Okay. Yeah, so the part I'd like to update the board on, um, since we have new board members, I'm going to take advantage of, of these opportunities over the next few months because I need to bring everybody up to speed. You know, where there's so many projects that we have going on, so I figure this is a good time to pick off at least part of this. The um, civic complex that we're in the process of um, getting ready to go out to bid should be out to bid by March of next year. Um, we've acquired the funding for this, some of the money coming out of reserves, um, some of the money coming out of, um, out of park and rec funds, which is our governmental funds, and a $6 million loan that we're in the process of um, finaling the paperwork on. The board has, um, has already been working on this and approved moving forward to this. We will be bringing it back to the board for some additional information um, at the, one of the next board meetings, uh, probably the next board meeting that we have. If not, we'll have a special meeting to discuss that. But um, we're looking at about a 10, or the initial estimates were about 10 to $11 million for the, the first part of the civic complex, which is, I believe, about a 15,000 square foot um, building, which will have um, chambers that have offices and additional room for parks and recreation um, on one end of the building. The, the good thing is, is <clears throat> the interest rates, um, well, I, I, there's, there's good and the bad to the interest rates. Um, we did get a decent interest rate. I believe we're about 4.75% interest for the $6 million that we're going to borrow for this project. Now, the good part of that is, is the money that we have in reserves. We're investing, um, per the board's um, direction and with their knowledge, about close to $15 million in um, different avenues that we have for doing the summer CDs, um, treasury bills and different um, investments that are allowed by law and just an investment off of um, a little over $10 million will pay the debt service on that $6 million loan with the interest rates where they were at prior to today and from what I understand they went up another 50 basis points so we should be in the range of four and a half to five percent of the money that we have which will generate um, in excess of um, I believe it's seven or eight hundred thousand dollars a year in interest on the money that we have in reserves um, over the years we've had half a percent if we're lucky um, just really nothing moving for the past 10 years unfortunately the rates went up which is a benefit to us but it also costs us more to build the building in addition to that the, it looks like the construction costs are way down from where they were even a year ago um, with the economy um, plywood went from eighty dollars a sheet down to about $30 a sheet of plywood. Still not a great buy, but, but putting that in perspective, that should cut the cost of the building down, hopefully below the amount that we had projected and the estimates that we had with that. Um, again, we're, gonna, we're planning on being out to bid um, probably by March of next year. Um, right now we have the lot next door leased and we're going to be doing, just kind of extending a month to month lease and we'll be bringing that back to the board um, at one of the next meetings coming up. And we're receiving about $6,500 a month just for the lease of that vacant property. So we want to continue that as long as we can reasonably do that. And we're looking for different pockets of money as we move forward with these projects to pay the $35,000 for a review of a permit to take Joshua Trees for the park. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. utterly ridiculous if you, if you want my opinion on that. But that is the state, that's what we're dealing with. And it, I think every one of the board members is familiar with, you know, the public contracting and what we have to go through with this. And that's kind of the cost of doing business. But we're doing the best that we can do to keep the costs down and be wise with the money that we have um, that belong to the people in the community to invest that money wisely. And if you have any questions on that, on that project, we will be bringing it back with some site plans and, and floor plans and um, elevations of what these look like. There's a lot of street improvements that are involved. And the big picture for this project will be the park. Part of the, part of the project will go all the way to the housing tract, back over to the east side of the property, stretching all the way to the school property on the north. And then the, the lot next door, we have all the, the construction equipment parked right now, um, all the way up to the restaurant. So we have quite a large project. The, the first phase of that is going to be the civic complex which would be the front part of the property where the street improvements will be done. Uh, there's, there's no sewer out here, but, um, but we'll be getting all that set up. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you, you have about that, but we will be bringing that back in committees and to the board to get everybody up to speed. Okay, thank you.
All right, any questions um, on this agenda item? No? Good. All right, so do I have a motion? No motion. All right, all second. Uh, all in favor of the motion to make the payment for the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the motion passes, thank you. All right, moving on to agenda item number seven, committee reports. Engineering? Uh, we didn't meet. We were supposed to meet an hour ago or an hour and a half ago. <laughs> so nothing new yet. All right. Uh, finance? Uh, yeah, we didn't meet. Legislative? No. That won't happen for a little bit. All right. Uh, <clears throat> I have notes. Hold, please. All right, Park and Rec. Um, we didn't meet, but I wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of the staff for their incredibly hard work on the Christmas tree lighting. Um, and thank you to the fire department for their attendance and for delivering Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we did have a couple of suggestions that we will b bring back to the Park and Rec Committee um, as far as having uh, students from Serrano Choir sing carols, um, perhaps an addition of uh, story time or something like that with the kids, just to kind of keep the public there for a little bit longer of a time. But uh, again, thank you to the staff for putting that together and for that poor staff member that had to untangle all of the, the lights, <laughs> tell I love her and tell her I'm sorry, because that was, that was sad. Yeah. All right, and solid waste and recycling. Um, we met, November 10th, um, and we had an incredible presentation by Mrs. Sevy on SB 1383. And I know I can speak for a lot of the people that are online right now that everyone was very happy to hear that we are moving in the right direction with that and that we are going to have more information on uh, self haul programs, de minimis user options, and I think everybody was very happy. And she told them, just wait, I promise, it's coming. Yeah. Good news <laughs> is coming. Yep. All right, staff and general manager's report. Mr. Burtz. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to welcome the new board members. Um, welcome to the team. I, we've, you know, we, we cover a lot of ground here, and we've had really good board members in the past, and I expect that we have a couple of um, great additions to the team. Deborah, it's been a pleasure working with you over the over the past four years or more. I know you were involved prior to that, and I know we're going to miss you being up here, but I know you'll be active in the community still, and we, we do appreciate um, what you've done for the district. Um, I would also like to ex extend an invitation um, to for a tour of the district. Um, if you want to come in and talk, my office is open. Um, uh, go over some of the things that we're doing. I'd love to take you on a tour of what we're doing with the different projects out here, um, whether it be the dairy project and um, where we have some um, storage container things going on, things that are generating revenue uh, for the district, and also the new the new wells uh, or new well that we are in the process of drilling right now. And Sean has been like chomping at the bit to, to give some little bit of an update and some good news to the to the board on this. So Sean, I'll let you talk about the new well. So as Don mentioned, <clears throat> we are in the process of drilling a new well. It's been an endeavor to get here. Uh, Kathy, I'm fine. <laughs> happy to report. Um, we broke ground. Um, the bit actually went in the dirt. Um, last week, the conductor casing went in. Um, however, our pilot hole started Monday. We're already to 470 feet. We hit water at 450 feet, and it's right. continuing to drill. We're doing about 10 feet an hour. Um, Jeez, and I didn't get to be there. I wanted to see this. <laughs> Come on out. Come on. Happy to give you a tour down there. Um, we're expecting a pilot hole to wrap up sometime Saturday or Sunday. We'll run the resistivity test, um, but it's looking really promising. Again, we, we just hit water a couple hours ago. Uh, about an hour and a half ago, we were at 470 and continuing. So we're just about halfway there already. Um, and as Don mentioned, that's not the only well we, we actually have in progress. We have a smaller well up in the mountains, what we like to call Zone G. Um, the sole plate was welded in place for that today. So we definitely have a lot of irons in the fire, um, pipeline projects. Um, yeah, always staying busy, so uh, yeah. there'll be more to follow. But pleased to announce everything's progressing and progressing really well. Well, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. We'll yes. have to go check it out. Yeah. 
happy yeah. to take you down there anytime. <laughs> Please come by. So this, this well's location is about a mile north of the, the wells that we have that are the furthest ones to the north, and they're north of Palmdale Road. And we have about a mile of 12-inch pipeline that we're going to put in to serve this well. And we're looking at probably one of the next wells would even go further north from this. It seems to be a very good area, good water quality, good production, and put a lot of, a lot of time and energy into finding just the right spot. And I'm very happy to hear that we did hit water. Um, our neighbors to the, to the south right here, Sheep Creek, um, as everybody knows, the, the consolidation has been called off at some point. Um, we couldn't come to agreement on, on the amount of money they wanted for their water rights, and it just, just didn't work out for us or for them. Um, they've gone off on their own. They need to drill uh, three to four wells to meet their maximum day demand. Um, the light is not on at the well rig that's up at their property right here, and from what I understand, they broke that down today. Um, they made it to uh, 560 feet and considered it a dead hole, and it is now filled with slurry. So they'll start with um, another location. I believe it's about two months away. Um, they have some Joshua tree issues that they have to deal with with CEQA, but um, they will be will be pursuing um, drilling the, at least several more wells to, to meet their demands from the state. Um, they did also... Um, the state released 30 meters, so you may see some construction around town, um, whether they're commercial. I'm not, I'm not sure how they're passing those, those wells out, whether it's just who you know or um, luck of the draw. But they do have 30 meters that they are allowed to set as part of the agreement with the state since they are beginning to drill their wells. And with that, um, it's been a really great year. A lot of changes over the last year. Staff has been working working very hard to to get these projects going and i'd like to to thank the staff for the hard work that they put in i mean we're doing for a small district we're doing doing quite a bit yes, you are. that's all i have unless you have any questions any questions i've witnessed it for the last four years yeah i've been great all right um was there something else we were going to try to play a video, but it's not going to work this evening. Okay. <laughs> so we no will bring it to the next meeting. No problem. Just want to make sure I didn't forget something. <laughs> All right. So we will move on to director's reports. Director Hoffman. I have nothing new to report except for thank you for re-election. <laughs> Yay. All right. Director Hayes. I'm just uh, happy to be here and uh, happy to work with everybody. And it'll be fun getting to know what's going on with the district and what things are happening out there. And I look forward to working with you. All right. Director Snyder. Yes. I'm happy to be elected to the district. I'm, one second. I'm so sorry. Um, our participants in Zoom cannot hear unless you turn oh, on your mic. So, Mr. Uh, Hayes, if you could go. go again. All right. No, I'd like to. And Mr. Uh, Snyder. Thank you. No, I look forward to working with everybody here at the district. Um, and thank you to the. Uh, the community who elected me and put me on this board. I appreciate the opportunity to serve the community and uh, hopefully bring a lot of uh, wealth of knowledge and experience to help out. Thank you. All right, give it a second shot. <laughs> All right, I'll turn the mic on this time. <laughs> I also want to thank the community for electing me and I look forward to working with staff and uh, getting familiar with the district and what's going on and look forward to working with everybody. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. And for my report, to be redundant, welcome. Welcome back. Happy to have you. All right. All right, so we will move on to number 10, correspondence and information. And since I'm still here, I can take this. Yay. <laughs> okay, so in our packet, you'll see that um, the Tri-Community Kiwanis thanked us for our support of the High Desert Veterans Dinner. Um, SDRMA, which is our insurance company, uh, let us know that we will be receiving some um, incentive credits for having no paid claims for our last program year. And then George will explain our utility cost management letter. Yes, I'll, if you can hear me, um, I'll touch on that. Uh, a couple months ago, we brought on the utility cost management to kind of review and analyze our time of use rates um, solar credits, um, the contract, uh, the RSBCT for the project um, to determine where there is some cost savings. And we've been working with our Edison rep um, almost several times a year. I mean, she's always in touch with us about what's out there and what is recommended. 
Um, UCM had found nowhere in um, where they, there was any cost savings to the district. Pretty much as we're at where we should be in our rates, we are where we should be with um, the settlement on the solar. Uh, it's, there, there isn't anything that we can really do to get us um, the cost savings. It, it really, <laughs> it, it helped staff um, be comfortable with where we were at with our, our rates and our time of use. Um, so it was reassuring to us to know that there isn't much we can do. I know the question has always been brought up is, uh, could we do better? Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, uh, there isn't much we can do now until the grandfather uh, period expires, probably in the next three years, we'll revisit this uh, with UCM and we'll kind of go through another evaluation. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Make sure you turn your mic on. <laughs> there we go. Thank you for the reminder. Um, so with our energy savings, um, I heard a couple key things in there. We use off-peak pumping. Is our SCADA system capable of that? I mean, how, how is our system set up to take advantage of, of all the energy use and efficient energy use? And I'll leave that question over to Sean. So our telemetry does have the capability of time and use parameters. Mm -hmm. um, we just upgraded our servers, we're DOD compliant, and that was just last year. Again, um, supply chain issues, that was about another 10 month endeavor. Um, storage is our greatest challenge to utilizing time of use to its fullest extent. Uh, we also have demand response capabilities um, at over 30 sites. We utilize those as much as possible. However, when the demand response expanded that to a four hour response, we don't quite have the storage capabilities to go that full window. So we do get credits, although limited, um, because we can about two and a half to three hour. Uh, Kim secured a grant, I believe two years ago, the district now fields four portable generators. Um, unfortunately for demand response, we can't deploy them. And those generators have been out more than I care to know about um, over the last two years. Our, Power is unique in this area in that we're three dead ends. Um, one coming in from the north, two from the south, and Edison calls them by poker acronyms, blackjack, uh, spade, and I forget the other third. But we do see a lot of power interruptions. Unlike where I came from, we never saw those power anomalies as we're here. They're very, very common. So, but when it comes to time of use, we do we maximize our TOU and off-peak pumping, um, but it's to a limited scale. However, with our new telemetry, we can, if Dawn approves, um, give people access, and if it's the desire of directors um, and the general manager approves it, I can give you access, but not capabilities of changing it. So like a view only, if you would, mm -hmm. um, to help better understand our telemetry. And again, I'd welcome anyone for a tour uh, our area is a little unique, and I think after about four hours, it really helps you get your feet on the ground to like, it's different, because we also have to balance in our pumping three sub-basins. So we have Alto Oeste and LA County, mm -hmm. and we do our very best to minimize our pumping costs via that way too. Yeah. Thank you, Sean, I appreciate that. I, I understand. You. Okay. And then just our regular billing schedule. And then a reminder, uh, sure, we had a lot of customers call in this week um, thinking we turned off their water, but their pipes were frozen. So we have a tip sheet that went out in the bills just to remind you to wrap your pipes and other things you can do to prevent frozen pipes. And that's all I have. All right. So number 11, prior meeting action items. Were there any? There were none. All right. Any current meeting action items? Um, nope. You'll just be getting some calendar invitations from me once we determine our committee schedule times. Okay. And setting the agenda for next meeting, December 21st. Yes. Um, staff would recommend that the board consider canceling the 21st board meeting. Um, a lot of people are going to be gone, um, including myself, um, with family in town or, or out of town. And staff would request that we, the board consider canceling that meeting and having the, the next meeting in January. Okay, you good? Yeah. With that? All right. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right. So at this time, we will now recess to close session at 545 p.m.